Now we are going to create our database. We have successfully created our server. You can choose any name. Make sure the owner should be Postgres. I'm going to name it to full stack underscore DB. You can choose any name. A new database has created successfully. So now it's time to create our Nest.js application. I have opened my terminal. You can choose any name Nest Generate. I think Nest New, the name of the project, full stack backend. I'm going to use this name. I'm going to select NPM. Our project has created successfully. CD full stack backend. So I'm going to open my code into my editor, which is VS code. Let me change the commit. So we successfully created our project. Now it's time to connect with Postgres. To connect with Postgres, I'm going to use rm. Dot. Let's create a new file inside the source directory. rm.config.ts file. But we did not install Postgres and the type rm. Nest.js. If you are not familiar with type RM, you can check my previous Nest.js beginner level course. In this beginner level course, I explained everything. I'm going to search the database. I'm looking for type RM integration. So I want to use Postgres. I don't want to install MySQL. So we have to use this plugin. I'm going to install nest type RM and the type RM. And we need PG. PG stands for Postgres. All the packages have installed. Now we need to connect our Nest.js application to Postgres. I'm going to create a config object. The type should be type RM model options. So I need to import some type from the type RM package. Type RM model options. Now we need to define the type. I'm going to use the Postgres. We also need to specify the port. By default, what is the port? The port is 54. Actually, the Postgres port is. Let me check the setting.
फाइव फोर थ्री टू या फाइव फोर थ्री टू we also need to specify the host host should be localhost 127.0.1 we created the database full stack underscore db we also need to specify the synchronize it will automatically create the tables if you will add another property to table it will automatically create that property into the database you don't need to create the property manually let's say i have companies table with this field id name city let's say that let's say i want to add a new property which is location this synchronize property this synchronize field will create this location property into the companies table I don't need to create manually. So I'm going to set it to true. Make sure you have set the synchronize property to false if you are using in production level. We also need to specify the entities array. I can find that from here. Yep. I just use the regular expression what let's say if you create the file with company dot entity dot ts it will recognize that all the entities will start with this entity word entity word entity dot ts file no problem I'll show you what is the purpose of this entity We also need to specify the username. In our case, we have Postgres. I also need to specify the password, which is root. That's all we need. Port, host, entity, and synchronize. I think post in not in the string format. It should be number. Now the error is gone now. So you have to write the specification type, username, password, port, host, database, synchronize, and entities. So we created the RM configuration. How can we how can we use that RM configuration? App.module. Here we need to use the type RM module. For root. We have to create the type or a module here. I'm going to specify my RM configuration. So we have to import the RM configuration. I can find that. I think, I, yeah, I imported the config. Config, oops, config. Now I can pass the config here. So I'm going to run the application. We have to run the application in development mode. So that's why I'm going to use npm start in the development mode. If everything will work, it means we have successfully connected to Postgres. Let's see what will happen. Awesome. Type or MR dependencies initialized. Type or module, core module dependencies initialized. It means it has successfully connected to Postgres. Now our next task is to create some entities. I'm going to create the company's entity. 
we're gonna build some companies listing type application we're gonna build the let's say app uh, where we're gonna build perform a user can perform CRUD operation a user can perform CRUD operation for companies in other words, you can say that a user can create, read, update, and delete the company. So we must have an API for the companies. In the future modules, I'll also teach you how to connect relationship between user and the companies. Now it's time to perform the CRUD operation for the companies. I don't have the company entity right now. So remember that I specified the entities path here. So I'm going to create the new folder. Actually, we need to create the module first. So I'm going to create a new module. So you, can, so you can use the CLI to generate a new module. Nest generate module. So you can use the short form, which is M. The name of the module, which is companies what is that it says company module and oops nest generate module companies cool cool so you have to use the module i don't know why it did it did not work with this command okay so i created the companies module you can see that we have companies module it has also added the entry inside the app module we also need controller i'm gonna say the companies companies controller has created we also need to generate service we will specify the database crud operations inside the company service this controller will have the rest endpoints we also need company class so I'm going to create company entity remember that I specified the entity inside the ORM config it means this is my entity so nest will figure it out that you have an entity so I'm gonna create a new class company so I'm gonna say it to entity you can specify the name which is companies now it's time to define the properties for the company entity the first property is ID let's say that ID the type is string I don't know what is type is number I think so but I want to create this ID property auto increment auto increment it will automatically increment the ID we also need created at the type should be date we also need updated at type should be date these three properties will be created for every entity let's say in the future let's say I'm going to create a new let's say that a user entity inside the user entity I also need these three properties you can say that let's say I created another entity let's say that user profile whatever you want to say I also need these three properties so this is called 
the violation of DIY pattern. Do not repeat yourself. But I found another solution to fix this problem. What we can do, we can create the base entity. So we can fix, we can add these properties inside the base entity. So I'm going to create a new base entity, base entity.ts file. What I will do, I will create the base entity. I'm going to place my these three repet repetitive properties inside the base entity. Now, whenever I need these three properties, what I will do, I will extend this class, base entity. Do not import the base entity from the type ORM. Make sure you imported the base entity from our path. Path is not correct. Have to go up. Cool. Now it looks good. Let me find base entity. Yep. We also need to add some annotation. This could be primary generated automatically. It will automatically generate the primary key. I have to set the optional properties. The ID is optional. Create it at. Created date column. I think so. Nullable should be true. Yeah. Whenever you create a new record, it's up to you. If you want to add the empty create up create add field, you can do that. Let's say we created add column the same property. Like all these properties are optional. So So we created the base entity. Let's try to run the project. npm start run dev. When I'm open the orm config, you can see that I set the synchronized true. So to test this field, it should must create the company table inside our database. Let's try to check that. Awesome. Companies module dependencies initialized. I hope it has created the companies table. Let's try to figure it out. So we need to refresh our database. Full stack DB. Let's try to check the schema. Where are the tables? Here we, oops, here we have the tables. Awesome, amazing, amazing. You can see the ID created at and the updated add field. Now we're gonna add our fields inside the companies. I think we have name, domain, and the description. So I need name property. I need domain property, type is string, I need description, the type is string. But I did not add the annotation, the type should be column. You can see that you will not see, let me refresh the table, there are only three properties because we did not specify our column column is Walter I don't know how to specify let's check it out yep I'm gonna use this property the column type is wall character length should be 100 minimum length should be one maximum length should be 100 and it's a nullable property 
no it's not a nullable property it means it is required you must need to specify the company name the same goes for the domain i think domain is also required property no domain is not a required property so it's up to you i'm just using as my project So description column type is equal to text why I placed the text here because text could be long description could be long description could be two paragraphs three paragraphs four paragraphs and it's nullable to true so it's an optional property you can specify that by default the value of the description is null this is the default value if you will not add the description by default it is going to add the null which is description i saved my application awesome everything is good now so I'm gonna refresh my table cool you can see the name property domain and the description property we have ID created ad name domain and the description so companies table is created successfully 